Now it's easy to calculate sales year to date, and that's a formula. And it's also easy to calculate sales prior year. But if you want to compare apples to apples, how do you calculate sales prior year, year to date? All right, let's dive in. So let's look at our Power BI model. So here we have the sales year to date uh, measure. I just showed you the formula. It's a pretty straightforward formula and I love that simple stuff in Power BI where you can do a lot of things very easily. So sales year to date, you've seen the measure and sales prior year, you've seen the measure. But again, as you can see right now, we're in the middle of the year. So it's May 10th and the current year uh, has data only till May 10th, right? And uh, But the prior year, has data for the full year so it ends up being an unfair comparison let's look at it with the help of excel i just wanted to show you in a visual so again current year you can see that it's only going till about you know kind of the uh, may 10th date but the prior year is a full year so of course and you can see that in the numbers that it's not kind of matching up right so it's we don't have the right information we can't effectively compare that are we doing better or worse than last year so of course what you would want to do is you would want to compare apples to apples so you want current year year to date which is pretty straightforward but how do you get prior year year to date that's what we're going to cover in this video now this question was asked by mike m one of our youtube followers and he posted a comment on one of our existing videos which you should also check out. I'm gonna to link to it at the end of this video. Power BI year to date across multiple years. Interesting video, but Mike said, hey, what about if I wanna see a specific date, like today's date, how do I do that? And that's what we're gonna um, uh, answer today. And of course, if you have any Power BI question you need uh, help answering, then just go to learnpowerbi.com slash question. So let's get started with this demo. By the way, you can download the file shown in this or any other demo here on learnpowerbi.com slash download. All right, my friends, so hopefully by this time you kind of understand the scenario, understand what we're trying to do. Uh, so I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, right? And then you can, of course, see which one works best for you. Now, what we're using in a model uh, so this is a simple model that we have, kind of the sales and the calendar. That's the only thing we worry about. But for the calendar, we are, of course, using our ultimate calendar table. Now, if you don't know what that is about, definitely check that out in our resources, the ultimate calendar YouTube video. You can get that free download and have this amazing calendar for yourself. Now, we have a lot of bells and whistles built into this calendar. And by the way, the right place to build your calendar table is certainly the query editor. And that's what this, this pattern uses. It builds the whole thing inside the query editor. And again, that video we're going to link to has all of the details for you, how to download, how to use it. But the key thing that I want to point out to you are a few of them. Um, um, one is this indicator, which marks whether a future date or past date. And we are going to be using that, right? So again, right now, it's uh, May 10th. So um, everything beyond that is going to be marked as future. Everything May 10th and before is going to be marked as past. And there's some other bells and whistles here, like the current year offset. And for that, uh, zero marks the current year. And again, the videos on the ultimate calendar talk about in more detail all the other stuff in, inside the ultimate calendar table. But what we're going to do is we're going to use that for our first solution. In fact, I'm already using one of those features right here. So notice I'm using current year offset as zero. Now, how that helps me is that I don't have to reset it every year in January. I used to do that when I first started out in Power BI. But, you know, that's yeah a sign of a great Power BI developer is that you're lazy. I don't want to do that every year, right? So it's just automatic. Every year is always going to show you the current year. So it's awesome, right? So current year offset is zero. So it is showing year 2022. And we can see that in the dates here as well. But again, as you can see here, it goes till the end of the year. It goes till December. And of course, well, we don't have data for the current year because, well, we haven't invented time travel, right? But we have data for the prior year. And that results in the apples to oranges comparison. So in each easy fix that we can do is that we can in the filters here we can go to our calendar table and bring in that future date field and apply that as a filter and I can say you know what I do not want to see future dates so I'm going to click on that right so again I brought that filter in and I said just show me the past dates 
and that's it and you can already see that how the graph is very different so again let me take it off so again focus on may so may it's making it look like uh oops let's try this uh, so May, you can see that it's sh showing the prior year, there were 335,000. And this year, it's like, oh, not as good, 255. But that's not quite true because, again, it's apples to oranges when we focus on just kind of the, the current date till May 10th. Well, then you can see that we are actually doing much better than last year. Last year till this date was 98,000. And well, this year, we are 255,000. So incredible, right? And again, you can see that in the table down here. Uh, we're only going till May 10. So this is a quick and easy fix, but this may not work every single time. So let's talk about the second scenario. So for the second scenario, I wanted to show you something which is part of our advanced module, but it, there are going to be scenarios where you can't filter down the whole page to only show current dates because you want to show future dates. You may not have obviously actual sales for future dates again unless you have the time machine but you might have forecasts and as you can see this is the advanced lesson where we show kind of a, a kind of an actual lines and then we show a forecast line right and, and of course there's a budget line here as well but again so you're going to be have scenarios where you cannot just simply filter down to the current date so um for that, that means we, we can't just willy nilly apply that future future date filter on the whole page. Now you can probably try to allow, uh, add that filter selectively on some uh, some visuals, but that's not a very clean solution. And I I'm always wary of that because I kind of forget it that I had the filter on it and so forth, and it leads to trouble. I would rather use the ultimate weapon that we all have, which is DAX. So let's see how we can solve it in DAX. And I'm going to take you step by step through that. All right, so I've created a kind of a working measure here, and we're going to use that to take you step by step through the process, right? So the uh, the overall high level, what we're going to do is, is that, uh, of course, first you have to understand that what's the incoming filter context, right? So and in this case, the incoming filter context is being determined by uh, this filter current year offset is zero, which effectively right now it means it is 2022. Now, of course, the magic of the ultimate calendar is the next year is automatically going to switch to 2023. But again, so effectively you have dates from January 1 through December 31. So first thing we need to do is we need to kind of filter out the future dates, right? So we only want the year to date. Uh, so let's do that first. So we're going to go here and again, pull out our magic wand, which is calculate, which is I always use to alter the filter context. So you have the calendar and here we're going to use that future date filter. And again, earlier we had kind of manually applied it in the filters pane. But again, you can kind of programmatically apply it using DAX. So it kind of gets built into this measure and this measure will always behave in this way. So we can say that here, future date, I only want past dates. I don't want any future uh, future dates, right? So again, so this is kind of the next step. So incoming filter context is, um, is uh, 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 you know, it's full year and this is filters out past dates. Uh, so again, we're getting here. Now, of course, the answer didn't change because we didn't have any future sales, understandably. So the answer is still the same, but that's good. The step is important. And the next step is that once we have the filter context, which is looking at the current year, year to day, then we can say, and say, hey, go same period last year. Again, kind of we know how to do the uh, sales year to date. We know how to do prior year. But in this one, we need to do both. So I'm going to show you <laughs> the wrong way to do it and the right way. So the wrong way is what I tried first. Uh, it doesn't work. So what I thought was that I, we already have the year to date. Now all I need to do is uh, just come in here and uh, uh, and I'll say uh, same period last year. So I'll shift the context there. Right. So I'll just do same period last year, calendar date, and it would work. But of course, it doesn't work. Let's give it a try. So you can see that it's not working. It's right. It's giving us the full year. It's still doing the apples to oranges. Now, whenever your measures don't work, 
then I know sometimes I feel rushed to just figure out the solution, figure out the answer. But if you really want to learn Power BI, maybe come back to it later or spend some time even there when you can just to simply understand and go step by step on why this is not working. Now, if you definitely are interested more in that, then I would say check out our training course, learnbarbi.com slash training, because it, it takes you through the five step process on how to debug measure. Step one, I kind of talked about the incoming filter context. But again, so you can debug every measure which is not working the way you would like it to work and truly understand that what is going on and why it isn't working. So again, go for some structured training which can help you understand some of those core concepts. But here, let's keep going and I'll just simply give you the solution. So um, what you need to do is approach it slightly differently. And we're going to pull in another magic wand, a magic wand inside a magic wand, <laughs> uh, calculates friend, calculate table. Now, the thing about calculate table is it's quite like calculate. Uh, it's a magic wand, it lets you alter the filter context. The only difference is that calculate uh, would let you return a single or a scalar value. Calculate table, well, guess what? It lets you return a table. And that's what we're looking for in this case. We're return, looking to return this table because that is what we want to be our new filter context. Filter context is simply a filtered set of rows. So we want to filter down to year 2021 till the current date. So let's go here and we're going to swap out and change the, the order here. So we're going to put this first. So I'm saying calculate this table, right? And uh, our future date is passed. So I'm going to give you a little bit more uh, tip here is that both calculate and calculate table operate outside in. Now what that means is that uh, we have the this is what's to be calculated. That's what this calculate table is working on, right? But this is what happens last, right? It's always the outside parameters, right? So anything that is specified here, and again, calculate table, you can specify multiple parameters, comma, this, comma, that, comma, this, comma, that, all of those will be calculated first, and only then will it come back and calculate this one. So that's what we're doing. We're saying first, you know, filter out the dates in the current year and remove all the future dates and then shift it back one year, right? All right, so let's uh, see it in action. And there we go. And of course, you see that this answer is exactly the same as the one we had gotten where we had applied this filter here explicitly in the filter condition. But of course, the advantage that we have here is that we have no such filter applied. So if we had like a, a forecast uh, column here or something as you saw in that other visual. So this is the visual that I was showing you where you're showing forecasts of the future year. You are able to do that using this approach. All right, my friends, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Now, again, if you have any Power BI questions, definitely check out learnpowerbi.com slash question and make sure to grab this file at learnpowerbi.com slash download to follow along. I'll see you in the next video. Power on. <laughs>